All of us know an Android user that pulls out his phone and wants to brag about how cool his phone is. Like, oh, look at my keyboard, it's black, and have I mentioned that keyboards have been customizable in Android since 2008, and your iPhone, <laughs> and your iPhone sucks because it's made by Apple. And then the Windows Phone users, all six of them, are like, we have excellent enterprise features, and have we mentioned that we have a great keyboard? Well, iOS users, our pain ends today because we actually do get third-party keyboards in the new iOS 8 operating system. There's so many, however, I'm going to take you through which ones are available today, which ones are worth downloading, and which ones you should avoid altogether. Color me odd, but I find it really funny that for years, Apple has prevented us from deleting or at least hiding these stupid stock apps that nobody wants to use. But in the new iOS 8 operating system, they let us get rid of the stock keyboard altogether and replace a third-party keyboard. I'm not complaining. I just think it's funny. The links to all of the keyboards in the App Store are in the video description below because in many cases they're not yet populated on the App Store search. Now every app does have a standard app icon on the home screen, but you have to enable them in a really odd way. You have to go to Settings, then General, then Keyboard, then Keyboards, and then add a new keyboard. And there is where the third-party keyboards will show up for the respective apps that have already been installed on your device. It's not just that though, you have to click that and then click allow full access. It's kind of a tedious process and regular users will get lost. I mean, this is something that seems very Android to me. It's not very seamless. It's not a big deal, but I kind of, I'm complaining a little bit. Why does the home screen icon exist, you ask? Well, from within the app, you are able to change the keyboard settings, like the color, the size, auto correction, whatever settings the developer wants to implement. Some are done really well. SwiftKey's user interface looks beautiful and works a charm. And some are really, really, really bad. Today I'm going to show you five keyboards, but the first one is Swipe. Now Swipe is available for 99 cents from the App Store, and Swipe is kind of like the grandfather of custom keyboards. It was the first custom keyboard available on Android, and people have fallen in love with it. It has a cult following. What you do is rather than typing each key individually, you drag your finger across the screen, and Swipe does a pretty good job at guessing the words that you want to use. Many developers have since tried to emulate or copy the swipe functionality, and none of them have even gotten close. If you like dragging your finger about, swipe is definitely the app for you. That being said, I found it quite gimmicky and finicky in several places. When swipe incorrectly guesses a word, it's really, really hard to get the right word because the prediction is not very good. It gives you a bunch of alternatives that are not even close to the real word you wanted. So what you have to do is just erase, go back and try typing it out again. And it's not a very seamless way of doing things. I guess if you're really, really accurate when it comes to swiping, it'll you know do you some good. But at that point, you're better off just getting a regular keyboard to type out on. Now, this is a finicky thing to criticize, but cosmetically, it is absolutely a boring. It is disgusting looking. The key contrast is bad. It doesn't support emoji. And the logo looks like it was made in Microsoft Paint back with Windows ME. I'm serious. It's, it's really bad. Now, if you're willing to pay the dollar for the app and you are addicted to swipe in its current rendition, then you might be served off well, but I just don't see this as a practical replacement for the stock iOS keyboard. The next keyboard is Flexi, and this is free in the App Store. This is actually my go-to keyboard on Android, and I have fallen in love with it. The reason I like it is because of this functionality. It is a gesture-based keyboard, and it has a serious learning curve. It took me weeks to get good at it. But what you're able to do is use gestures to change punctuation, to delete words, to go forward, without ever taking your thumbs off of the main keyboard. You don't have to go hunting and pecking for symbols, which is really, really convenient. Here's one real big annoyance, is the dictionary is rather limited, so there's a lot of sophisticated words that the keyboard does not know. And if you use them periodically, you have to add them manually to the dictionary. It's not like other keyboards where they learn, oh yeah, he's used the proper name Xavier four times, so we're gonna add it to the dictionary and we're never going to autocorrect it to something else. Well, this keyboard does not do that. So if you type Xavier, you, you will type it a million times and the keyboard will still keep correcting it until you manually add it to the dictionary, which is a huge pain in the butt. That being said, it does have the best emoji integration out of any keyboard. So if that's your thing, if you like to, to send cute little hearts back to your girlfriend, then this is a great keyboard for you and offers a complete emoji library without having to change keyboards, which is great. The third keyboard is available for $4.99 in the iOS App Store, 
It's called Text Expander. It's the most expensive keyboard to date, but boy, does it do some pretty cool stuff. Now, Text Expander has been my go-to app for years on the Mac, and what it allows you to do is create a content or a body of text and expand it by a trigger or keyword. Now, some will say, well, that was implemented in iOS 5 and in OS 10 Mavericks. And yes, that's true, but they're very limited. You can only put in one or two words at a time, and they can't be formatted. Whereas with Text Expander, you can add in tab marks, you can add in return marks, anything you want. And you can actually even do HTML formatting. So you could create a cool email signature with a logo and all sorts of stuff and put it into mail the default uh, iOS uh, mail app, which is really, really great. And that's a functionality that is definitely one well wanted. So I can show you how it works. If we go here, one phrase that I type a lot is stay snazzy and I've clicked SSS to be my trigger word. So when I hit SSS, the stay snazzy phrase expands and the same with my signature. If I type SIG, then stay snazzy will expand with all of the information, my name spelled wrong by the way, uh, that you <laughs> that you need. Another cool thing is it does contextual information as well. So if you type in D date, it will do the date for every day of the year, which is really, really cool. It's great for notes, for essays, for papers, all sorts of stuff that you're doing on your iPad, and it's really well implemented. Now, unfortunately, there is no emoji integration which is a big bummer, but it really closely emulates the style and design of the original iOS keyboard, which is great. The biggest problem with the keyboard is it's not a really good keyboard. <laughs> it does allow you to expand text, but the autocorrection on this is just not good. It's certainly not as good as the built-in iOS keyboard, and it just gets destroyed by the next keyboard that I'm going to show you, which is called SwiftKey. It has potential, it has future, but right now, I can't recommend it just because the keyboard itself is not very good. It does expand text like a charm, but that's about all it does, unfortunately. The next keyboard is called SwiftKey, which is available for free in the App Store, and for years it has been the number one go-to keyboard on Android, and for good reasons. I don't know how it works, but you can type like a total buffoon, like a monkey, with your fingers all over the place, and somehow, by magic, I don't know, it gets the right word. Now, part of it is because it synchronizes your Facebook, your contact list, and all that stuff, and it learns the weird words that you use so that it knows how to correct them. Furthermore, you can sync your devices together, which is great, because if you have an Android phone and an iPad or an iOS device, you can sync all to have the same shared library. It's amazing. Aesthetically, the keyboard is pleasing and the autocorrect, again, is just out of this world. Now, unfortunately, emoji support is not super good, but multi-language support is fantastic. I'm always switching between Spanish and English, and so the accessibility there is superb, and it's almost as good at autocorrecting Spanish as it is at English. I mean, this is the, the keyboard for everyone, and it's the only keyboard at this point in time that I can currently recommend. Other keyboards have potential. They look cool, but at the moment, they're just not worth installing, not to mention that a lot of them are really, really buggy. And that brings us to our fifth keyboard. It's called TouchPal and it totally sucks. It doesn't work on the iPad nor on the iPhone 5S. It looks like it has potential, but every time you try to insert punctuation, the app freezes. So you can type in letters, but the second you try and put in a period, the keyboard crashes and the app stops working. It's terrible. The clear winner here is SwiftKey. It's by far the best keyboard. It blows all of its competition out of the water, and it's even better than the stock iOS 8 keyboard, actually by a lot. It's really functional, autocorrect is fantastic, it syncs your library between multiple devices. It is just the clear go-to in my opinion, and I wouldn't recommend anything else. Go get SwiftKey right now, install it, and you'll be a very happy camper. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.